Behind me in this 40 by 40 foot arena with walls of one inch thick bulletproof glass, 24 heavyweights of combat robotics will duke it out in a no holds barred, knockdown, drag out fight to the death, or at least the scrap heap. This is Killer Robots. I'm Grant Imahara, and welcome to RoboGames 2011 here in San Mateo, California. This is the Olympics of Robotic Combat, where teams from across the world showcase a year's worth of work and some lightning-fast remote control moves in the ultimate engineering smackdown. The marquee event is the Heavyweight Combat Robots, or Combots, competition, where robots weighing 220 pounds face off in brutal head-to-head -head combat. They each get three minutes to bash, blast, and burn each other into submission. Yeah! In the end, the robot that can still move wins the match. If both robots are left standing, then it goes to a panel of judges to decide who moves on. 24 of the most destructive robots ever built fought it out in the qualifying rounds, and now 16 survive for today's championship tournament. But when the smoke clears, just one will be crowned this year's ultimate killer robot. This is the most competitive field we've ever had. Let the battles begin. Welcome back to Killer Robots. I'm Grant Imahara. This is the 2011 World Championships of Robot Combat. 16 fire-breathing, blade-spinning robot warriors throw down in three-minute fights to the death. But at the end of the day, only one will stand alone, crowned king of robo-games. So far, two robots have advanced to the quarterfinals, but there's a lot more action to come. Toro Maximus is determined to join the others. Let's check out the match. Toro Maximus, the bull from Brazil, and Team Riobots have traveled more than 2,000 miles to be here today, and they do not plan on leaving empty-handed. Led by Professor Marco and their driver Daniel, this team of students is fresh off a silver medal finish in the 2010 Robo Games. This year, they're determined to win gold, but it won't be easy. Driving these robots is really stressful. I wouldn't like to be in Daniel's place because uh, you have the, the work of the entire team for one year and you have to show it there when it's only three minutes. But three minutes is all robots need to do massive damage. Their robot, Toro Maximus, is a drum spinner armed with a cylinder of solid steel that spins upwards, grinding its opponents and hurling them into the air. It's a really tough drum bot, 70 pounds uh, drum that spins at 8,000 revolutions per minute. With steel skin as thick as a tank, acceleration equal to that of a race car, and a weapon that spins as fast as a chainsaw, Toro Maximus is the perfect blend of armor, speed, and power. It could make Riobot the first international team to take home the trophy. Toro's opponent is Vera, a bar spinner, armed with a 70-pound tempered steel blade that spins faster than a helicopter. Getting hit by Vera would be like getting crushed between a brick wall and a car going 40. Vera's a blender on steroids. Aluminum makes no sparks at all, so if we're hitting them and there's no sparks, that's us winning. Because we have two very violent spinners here, I need to remind everybody once again, be behind the yellow caution tape. Immediately, a ring taken out of one of the two robots. Not sure which one. Both robots are still spinning. When you've got two spinners, it's the ideal situation for damage. What? Toro's got to maneuver around the back, but you know what? They don't care. They're going straight in. A big shower of sparks between the two robots. I got to tell you, this for 
Brazilian team, they are crazy. Yeah! It's no holds barred. A minute 45 left in this competition. Laura Maximus trying to go after the one good wheel on Vera. Oh, completely over. Yes! And a huge hit which breaks the blade of Vera. And there is Laura Maximus flipping Vera to the over. It worked so well. Did it work like you thought it would? Yes. That is a classic, classic drum spinner damage match. Team Toro makes their intentions clear. They're determined to bring the trophy home to Brazil. For these mechanical warriors, RoboGames is a killing field. The quarterfinals are next, and the excitement is skyrocketing as mangled metal, torn tires, and flaming fighters crash across the arena. They both have fun! It's clear that robot combat is the main draw here at RoboGames, but it's not the only draw. There are over 60 different events with robots displaying amazing feats of intelligence, dexterity, and skill. There's weightlifting, hockey, and soccer. There's a robot foot race, and there's a robot dance competition, among others. Nice, oh, he's got a swiping move. Yeah. Cool. Another popular event is the autonomous walking competition. Without any help from its human, the robot has to make its way through a field strewn with obstacles, up and over a small set of stairs, and across the finish line. It's not easy. All right, I gotta ask. Tell me about the monkey on your back. Oh, yeah, I've been trying to get rid of him for years. This is it. The brutal battle for the final spot in the semis. This is gonna be huge. Original Sin versus Toro Maximus. Toro Maximus continues its rampage through the bracket, but it hasn't been easy. They beat a blade spinner in the last round, but it took a heavy toll. We've been uh, rebuilding the entire robot since the 3.30 uh, p.m. fight. I got completely wrecked, had to switch motors, and I think we barely made it. This time, they're up against Original Sin. Sin's wedge is made of the same steel used to make bulldozer blades and rifle range targets. But the real danger is the motor, which delivers as much power as a full-size go-kart racer in the hands of three-time gold medal winner, Gary Jim. Last year, we lost to Toro Maximus because I wasn't really on my game. We actually won once and, and lost once against Original Sin, so this will be the tiebreaker. All right, man, it'll be fun. The strategy is to just stay on them, not let them get around to the sides, and just be aggressive. There's a bloody history between these two. This will be their defining moment for 2011. The winner moves on, the loser goes home. Five, four, three, two, one, fight! And the first hit from Drum to Wedge produces sparks, but doesn't seem to slow either robot down. Strategy. They've got to get them up them off the wall. Try and flip them over. If you hit that spinning drum, you may end up getting damaged. Little pieces of original Sin's tires being strewn about the arena, torn off by Toro Maximus. Spinning drum still going. Two very strong robots. The only problem original Sin has right now is that wedge front that he's relying on. Getting divorced. That gets hung up on the arena. It's gonna slow him down. Toro, not moving. Maximus on the wall. Can they move off? Of it? They can. The 10 Nine, second countdown has begun. Toro Maximus has to move there. They're wiggling. Six, five, and then, four, four, three, two, one. No good. The reason. winner is original. This is the end of Team Riobot's epic run to take the trophy south of the border. So you're moving on. Yeah, we're moving on. All right, congratulations, All right. Gary. With their win, Original Sin clinches the last spot in the semifinal. This will be the most dramatic, gear-crunching, flamethrowing climax in the history of robotic warfare.